Hello, 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 and welcome to Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher. We are so happy to have you here with us on tonight. Um, we are happy that you have chosen to embrace life with us. Amen. Um, your presence and participation are greatly appreciated. Um, so we encourage you to participate and not spectate. Amen. So go ahead. If you're on Facebook and give um, StreamYard permission to show your beautiful face and name by clicking the link above or the link that's attached to yesterday's video, that might be easier to find for some reason. Um, but yeah, go ahead and click that so that whenever you comment, whenever you do say hello, um, whenever you do share your insights and your testimonies and your expertise, we can know that it is you and we can acknowledge you by name. Amen. Amen. You are in the room of Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher, Fisher Holistic Self-Care Mentor, where we do real talk, real love, real wisdom, real help that if you heed will lead to real transformation. And if you are blessed, be a blessing. Amen. Hit me up on paypal.me slash Lady Aisha Fisher. It will be greatly appreciated. What we do here is holistic wellness, holistic um, self-care, because the Bible says that we are a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. And so therefore we minister to all parts of our being so that we can be healthy and whole, healthy and whole, amen, in every area of our life. Um, one way to do that is to find friends who inspire growth as iron sharpens iron and not just any growth but spiritual growth. Amen. And this is a community where you can do just that. Um, this month, what we're doing now is we're having our um, 31 day uh, challenge uh, entitled Taming Your Fears, Practical Help for a More uh, Peace. Yeah, practical help for a more peaceful and productive life. And so we start off by doing a review of that book, but then we go deeper. Amen. Then we go higher. Then we then we go above and beyond so that we can get all that God has for us um, during this time, because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. And so we will be intentional in making sure that we fully understand that, that we fully embrace that in this month. Um, where the devil maximizes on fear, 
Amen. We want to do the opposite of that and set people free of fear, not just tame fear, but overcome fear. And so we are uh, challenging ourselves to show up every night um, at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're giving God 31 days. Amen. We're increasing our spiritual appetite. Um, we're sacrificing. We're drawing closer. We're learning. Um, we're, we're transforming our minds, renewing our minds. We're doing all of that. Amen. And so I encourage you to um, come back every night, but also share these into your realm of influence and invite people to come and to join um, the conversations as well. There is an invite button right at the top of the woman to woman group. Click it and then it'll give you a list of um, your the friends on Facebook that you can invite simply by clicking it and it'll send them an invite. So invite your lady family friends to join us so that we can all grow together and all sharpen each other. Amen. Um, in order for us to do that, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit because the only ghost that should live here in this house, in our temple, in our homes, in the lives of our children, in our front yards, in our side yards, in our work cubicles, in our cars, is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because your life um, has purpose. Your story is important. Your dreams count. Your voice matters. You were born to make an impact and we don't want you to be sidetracked. And, 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 and to, to get your assignment distorted, amen, and to be distracted by the enemy, enemy's vices. And so um, we invite you um, to join us live on, on the screen to share any of these um, topics that we're going to be discussing that are an issue for you, that you have overcome, that you have testimonies for, that you might be an expert in, um, Come on, let me know, and then I'll send you the information so that you can come backstage and join me. We would love to have you so that we can talk woman to woman. Amen. And I want my voice to be the only voice um, because we are God's women of powerful influence. Each of us has powerful influence. And, I, and my job is to help you understand that and to help you walk in it. Amen. And part of that is getting out of your comfort zone and being a help to somebody else. Amen. And, and, and in the process, you'll be helping yourself, whether you know it or not. Right. And so let's do that. Let's pass down the faith, um, not only to our children and our children's children and our children's children, but to those in our realm of influence. Amen. Amen. So stay strong. Your story isn't over. We, we all, um, our, our stories are still being written, but we want to keep on and run on and see what the end's going to be. Amen. We have some additional sources, resources for um, family situations. Our family breakthrough de through devotionals are found on the YouTube page. You can go over there and maximize those as well. Amen. So who is in the room? Who is in the room? We are live inside of Twitter, inside of the Woman to Woman Facebook group, and also on our um, webinar, which can be found on our church page. And I will give you um, some more information about that a little later. Amen. So um, hello, hello, uh, Sister Teresa. Hello, hello. Um, good evening to you, Sister Talia. Um, hello, hello, Sister Pearl. Go ahead and um, give StreamYard permission to show your name and face just by clicking that link above um, this video or by um, looking at the video from yesterday and clicking on the link there. Amen. We will be happy to be able to see your name and face beside your comments. Hello to everybody who might join. I mean, who might be watching the playback? Hello to you as well. Still, still go ahead and, and say hello because I'll get that alert to let me know that you stopped in. Amen. So go ahead. Um, we're going to not go ahead, but we are going to pray, review and learn something new. We're going to review um, the what the author has written about uh, for this chapter that we're reviewing. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to learn something new about the topic as well. So go ahead and posture yourself in humility to receive what God has for you um, on tonight. Amen. Um, Father, I thank you for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you for your love and your kindness, your grace and your mercy, for loving us in spite of us, for fearfully and wonderfully creating us in your image to do great things for your kingdom. I thank you for this another opportunity to draw closer to you, to spread your good news into all the earth. I thank you for these platforms and this social media and this internet, making that uh, all the more possible and all the more easy 
to do, oh God. So I thank you um, for all that you are doing, for all that you have done, for all that you are going to do. I thank you for every open door and um, uh, allow us, encourage us to continue to walk through them, to continue to sit down and eat um, at every table that you place before us. Allow us to chew up the meat and spit out the bones and use that meat to grow more spiritually strong, more spiritually mature, more spiritually alert, hallelujah, so that we can have maximum impact in our realm of influence, so that we can be as effective as possible in our realms of influence, starting in our homes, oh God, starting with our spouse, with our children, with our grandchildren, with our nieces and nephews and sisters and brothers and mothers and fathers and aunties and uncles and grandparents, oh God, then moving on to our classmates if we're in school, moving on to our um, our um, work what do they call work? The people that we work with, <laughs> Can't, the, the, the name escaped me uh, in the moment, but the people that we um, work with, oh God, and our neighbors, just at, at all of it, all of our, every person that we, um, that, that we come across in our daily uh, lives, uh, whether it's at the grocery store, the gas station, um, wherever the restaurant, wherever it is that we're going, uh, the park, wherever it might be, allow us to notice people and to give them a smile, to say hello with our smile, to make them know, uh, to, to remind them that they're important and they're count and, they, and that they are not invisible, that we see them and that we love them because they are your creation, oh God. So be with us on tonight. Tonight. We're excited about um, what's going to be released. We're excited about the new information we're going to learn. We're excited about the new tools and resources that are going to be provided so that we can begin to implement them. Uh, hallelujah. So that we can be love um, and, and, and light in darkness. In Jesus' matchless and powerful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, hello, hello. Good evening, uh, Sister Twyla. All right, let's go on ahead here and, and begin. Fears, anxieties, and phobias. Oh my. Fears, anxieties, and phobias. Oh my. If you notice, I'm talking a little bit quiet. It's because I have a uh, a headache. And so I hope you all can hear me. I might get hyped <laughs> as we continue to go through, um, but be praying for this uh, headache. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by a sense of danger. Fear can be either healthy or un or harmful. Um, a healthy fear protects us from danger and unhealthy, harmful fear invokes danger through a sense of dread or terror that negatively affects our life. I'm actually going to turn myself up because I know I'm talking softly. <laughs> All right. Um, glory to God. Unhealthy fear is a negative learned behavior from either um, a personal experience or an observed experience. Intensified fear leads to anxiety. Uncontrolled fear leads to phobias. When we embrace fear, we reject God's willingness to free us from fear. When we embrace fear, we reject God. Choose freedom from fear today. Choose the abundant life that Christ offers today. Amen. Uh, glory to God, because it is available to you. And so um, anxieties and phobias are rooted in the following core fears. We have death and pain. Those are intertwined. Um, um, we we have in at fear of inadequacy, fear of loneliness, um, fear of helplessness, losing control and lack, which are all grouped together as well. And as we're learning um, that when you when you find the the root of your fear, a, a lot of the and you and you uproot it, <laughs> there could be more than one fear that goes away, right? There there could be a a a number of fears that go away because they're all intertwined and intertangled and and rooted in the same core fear. Amen. And so that's that's good news to know that if we just if we just work on one of these four areas right here, we can get loose in, a, in, in multiple different areas um, in our life and we can be free and, and, um, and begin to feel like we have, not feel like we have because we do have more power, but begin to um, 
to, to, to operate in that power because we have confidence um, and that is not bogged down by fears. Amen. Amen. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk woman to woman. I'm going to go ahead and bring up uh, my helper here, my trainee here, Sister uh, Ishaya is with us. She's not a woman, but she is a young woman. And it is our job as women to train the young women in the things of God. Amen. And so that's what we are doing um, here tonight. And we're going to talk about taming the fear of loneliness, taming the fear of loneliness. So let's dive into the chapter and what um, the author has to say. Um, and she says, the worst loneliness is not to be comfortable with yourself. And that's by Mark Twain. Uh, aloneness is a physical state of voluntary or circumstantial solitude or isolation. Loneliness is an emotional state in which a person feels disconnected, isolated, alienated, or cut off from meaningful interactions with others. Habitual aloneness is not God's will for his children. God declared it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And that's found in Genesis 2.18. Yes, some animals can help alleviate loneliness, but God created man to be in relationship with those comparable to him. Loneliness is an emotionally painful state that causes great anxiety. Many go to great heights to avoid it. The fear of loneliness or being alone is a core fear known by a number of names, including autophobia, isolophobia, and monophobia. It can significantly affect a person's quality of life physically, emotionally, relationally, and financially. Studies show that this fear makes people insecure, anxious, clingy and depressed. It causes them to tolerate dysfunctional or abusive relationships. And we just got talking, we just finished talking about that yesterday in depth. Amen. Loneliness causes some people to tolerate dysfunctional or abusive relationships. Many people are lonely, though not alone, such as when there is an emotionally available spouse. Such relationships are unfulfilling. All of us may experience occasional loneliness. However, chronic loneliness can be lethal. Try these proactive strategies for ensuring a meaningful and rewarding social network. Learning to enjoy and engage in more activities will give you a broader base of social interactions. Serve others with your time. Begin nurturing your relationships by connecting with at least three people each week by, via phone or in person. Commit to visiting with close friends, family, or even a neighbor or two. Um, caution, don't try to nurture a relationship that doesn't nurture you. Meaningful relationships must be mutually satisfying. We talked about that the other day too, about how some relationships can be draining. That's not a healthy relationship. They should be mutually beneficial. Work at being comfortable with solitude. Take time to enjoy your favorite dish, movie, or other activity alone. The scriptures record numerous instances of Jesus restoring to um resorting to solitude for med for meditation, renewal and reflection. And that can be found in Matthew 14:23, Mark 1 and 35, and Luke 4:42 4, as well as Luke 5:16. Reject the idea that you cannot survive without certain uh, without a certain person being in your life. Reject the idea that you cannot survive without a certain person being in your life. That's a dangerous place to be. That that's that leads you to, to, uh, to abuse, right? God is the only one you must have. And he has, he has promised to never, he has promised never to leave you. I hear somebody saying how, because I said, um, um, Reject the idea that you cannot survive without a certain person being in your life. And I said that leads to abuse. Why? Because you accept certain things that you know you shouldn't accept 
for the for the sake of keeping them around. Right. And so when they are when they become aware of that, they manipulate the situation. And that's not healthy. That's not mutually beneficial. And they, mm-hmm. they, they can manipulate because they know that you, you're, you're, you're desperate for them to be there. And they know that you will allow them to do anything just to keep them around. You'll allow them to cheat on you just to, just to keep, you know, they with you know, they're with more women and you, 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 you brush it off by saying, oh, but I'm the main chick. No, 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 no. That's unhealthy. You can maintain, you can survive without him. You allow him to put his hands on you because you think you cannot survive without him. You, you allow him to disrespect you because you think you cannot survive without his money. And that's a manipulation tool too. Serious. It's serious. Amen. That's why we got to get healthy and whole. So that we so that we know that we are we don't have low self-esteem and we know that we're worthy because God says we're worthy. And then we dive in his word and we get our strength in his word by by falling in love with him and embracing the love that he has for you, because no man can love you more than God. Woo, Jesus, not one, not even your spouse can love you more than more than not God, not even your your father. Can love you more than God. Not even your mother. Nobody can love you more than God does. He created you and he He desires what's best for you. And he knows what's best for you. His, his intentions are for you to prosper. Hallelujah. And to live the abundant life that Christ offers. Amen. Somebody needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear that. God is the only one you may have, and he has promised never to believe, to, to leave you. Amen. Amen. So that is what the author says. That's a summary of the, of the uh, chapter that she has written about loneliness. So um, go ahead and write your insights. What stood out to you um, in the comments? And remember, you can write those as I'm going, type those as I'm going, and I'll come back to them. Amen. But be, have a listening ear. This is, this, is, this is a time of interaction. This is a time of iron sharpening. This is a time of talking woman to woman. Amen. So Ishaya, um, did anything stand out to you? In the beginning, it said not to, um, to be comfortable with yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what you said, right? Yes. Yeah, so what I got from it was that it's okay to be alone. It's like loneliness is the problem. Which right. I feel like a lot of people think that loneliness and being alone is the same thing and it's not. Yeah, I think she clarified that. Let me read that again because I don't know that I um picked up on that the the uh, the first time. Um, but I did pick up on it when I was reading it here. So let me see if I can find that quickly. Um, oh, that's, a, that's why I can't find it because that's the wrong chapter. <laughs> All right. Aloneness is a physical state of voluntary or circumstantial yeah. um, solitude or isolation. So being alone does not mean that you are lonely, right? It's voluntary. It's something that you want to do. I prefer to be alone because I um, am an introvert, right? And so being alone brings me joy. (laughs) I'm not lonely at all. I go out all intentionally for self-care, for self-care. There's a lot of people in my house. And so for my own self-care, I need to be by myself. I understand that. And so I go out to eat all by myself and I enjoy uh, the, the time by myself. You got to be able to enjoy your own company. It's a, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad when you cannot enjoy your own company because that means that you have, in most cases, low self esteem. You don't you don't esteem yourself as um, good enough to enjoy. I can enjoy myself all by myself. Right. I don't need anybody else to make me feel good. I don't need anybody else to make me feel secure. I don't need anybody else to to else's present to presence to make me feel comfortable. Right. I can find that all in my aloneness. Amen. 
And so that's something really to look into. If you can't sit in a house without having the TV on, without have you can't just sit in silence. That's a that's an issue. You need that. You need to tap into God and find out why. Because aloneness is a good thing. Jesus exampled it for before us. He went off out alone many a times, and he wasn't alone. Because God is with us everywhere we go. He was tapping in and drawing closer to God, right? Do we really see our heavenly father as our heavenly father, as somebody that we desire to spend time with, as somebody that we need to spend time with so that they can, so that our heavenly father can nurture us and train us? Do we see our heavenly father? Do we see God as our heavenly father? We talked about that as well. When we when we first get saved, it's just God. But there should be an elevation where God becomes the Lord of your life. And then when the Lord of your life becomes your heavenly father. Right? Just like with any any relationship you have, have there's an elevation. There's there's an increase in intimacy as you get to know them. You get you become more comfortable around them. It's no different with our personal relationship with God. It's no different. We have to treat it as a relationship that requires our time and our um, pursuit. I don't have a lot of friends because I don't have because friends require time. They do. And I don't, I'm not willing and able to dedicate the time that is needed for friendships, for a whole bunch of friendships. I, I just don't have the time and I'm just not willing and able. I'm an introvert. I'm cool by myself. I got a large family, six children and a husband. If I need some, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yes, I hear it too. It is good for you to have relationships outside of your husband and outside of your, outside of your children. It is good for you to have that, right? And so, you know, you got to be, again, choose your friends wisely because your friends, the birds of a feather flock together. And if y'all all flocking to the bar, those is not friends that you need to have. If y'all flocking to the strip club, that's not friends you need to have as a follower, as, a, as someone who's professing to be a Christian, right? Or someone who's in pursuit of God and Christianity and becoming a follower of Christ. Amen. I don't know how we got all over there, but see, that's what happens. What was you saying? Anything else stand out? No, I was going to say um, meaningful, but you already said that, like being alone by yourself on purpose. Mm -hmm. you already said yep. And then and then I stopped because loneliness to see the difference. Aloneness is voluntary, but loneliness. See, when you're dealing with loneliness. It says loneliness is an emotional state in which a person feels discontent, disconnected, isolated, alienated, cut off from meaningful, meaningful interactions. That, that, that there is unhealthy. All of mm -hmm. those things are unhealthy. Those are not good things, right? And so we have to be able to know the difference and be able to see the signs, amen? And we're going to get into all of that. We're going to get into all of that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move right along. Let's see what is next. Oh, my! I want to let you know that in case um, something happens and you get kicked out or um, the, the yeah, that's really it. If for some reason we the, you, um, Facebook kicks us out, no frets, no worries. Go right over to our website, AbundantLifeMinistries.ChurchTrack.com and click on the post that has the um, challenge flyer on there with all of the the 31 things that we're covering just i believe it's the second tile down just click on it and it'll take you right to the webinar you'll be able to see the screen just like you see it now amen so if that happens don't don't worry about it just go right over to the website amen amen so let's go ahead and dive into our first video we live in a world more connected than ever yet we are more lonely than ever but what is loneliness exactly, and why is it so pervasive today? Here to answer those questions, Dr. Varma. Let's start with the first one. What is loneliness? Loneliness is a subjective feeling um, of feeling that people are not with you, that people don't understand you, that you don't feel connected, um, that you are alone. 
And what's interesting is that loneliness is different from social isolation. Somebody can have a wide network of people around them in their life and still feel lonely. And in fact, most of the people who say that they feel lonely are married and live with other people. Mm. But it's the quality of those relationships that's really key. On the other hand, you can have somebody who is not surrounded by a lot of people and prefers to be that way and still not feel lonely. So there really is a subjective quality. And I'm glad that we're teasing these two things apart, loneliness versus social isolation. I absolutely socially isolate. Mm -hmm. And I have talked about that in our anxiety series with Dr. Romney, but it's a choice yes. and there is some benefit that I receive from it Yes, because I don't want to be around people all the time. Exactly. Uh, but there are some people who are around people all the time yes. and they're still lonely. Yes. Yes. So what are those people to do? You know, it has to do with the quality of the interaction. So first of all, a lot of people will say that their interactions these days is online. So when you're talking about the social connectedness that we feel, they're not in real life. So that's number one. Number two is when you are connecting with people, are you making yourself vulnerable? Are these people people that you would share the lows of your life with? So everybody's mm. on social media with their highlight reel of everything that's going on perfectly in yeah. their life, right? But who wants to talk about the imperfections? Are you willing to share your imperfections? So that means on some level you have to bear your soul and mm -hmm. are you willing to do that? And as a result, is the person that you're doing this with willing to receive it? One of these most beautiful quotes that I've heard recently um, by the Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh, he says, compassionate listening is giving permission to the other person to empty their heart. I know exactly who you're talking about and what you're talking about. Wonderful. Fantastic. But will you say that again yeah. so people really get that? Compassionate listening is giving the other person permission to empty what is in their heart. I mean, if you don't get that, you've got to get that <laughs> to be a compassionate listener. Mm -hmm. I love that. How do we become that compassionate listener? So compassion is empathy in action. Compassion is empathy in action. Yes, okay? and I'll explain what I mean. And empathy is the gateway to compassion. Okay. So what we're, it's not enough to be empathic. Empathy is necessary, but not sufficient. So being able to feel with somebody else, right, from your own frame of reference. So if you're suffering, Kyle, I want to be able to understand your suffering through my lens. What would that feel like? What Kyle's going through, what would that feel like for me? And that's a way for me to relate to you. Mm -hmm. But I would want to go one step further to say, how can I help Kyle as a result of this, right? Like, I want to do something actionable. And we don't realize, but listening is an action step. Listening without judgment, without filters, right? without wanting to impose our own point of view onto somebody else. I don't want to change you. In compassionate listening, I want to be with you. I want to be in your presence. I want to be able to receive what you have to say and give you space, give you a container in which you get to dump, if you will, what unload what you're experiencing. Is being a compassionate listener a privilege? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. To have, you mean to have a compassionate listener or to, to be, be one? the one? Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. how I want people to view it. Yes. Is it, you're not, well, I'm taking one for the team here. Yes. What an honor. Yes. That That's somebody such a great way. else yes. is trust, has that type of trust yes. in you. Yes. Trust yeah. and faith in your wisdom, mm -hmm. in your judgment, mm -hmm. in your sensitivity, in your mm -hmm. humility, in your compassion, and, mm -hmm. and to say that, like, I feel safe with you, mm -hmm. right? Like in an unsafe world, I feel safe with you. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to receive what I have, even though it's not beautiful, but it's precious, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's what we're missing. We're missing genuine connection, human connection on such a deep level, right? That you see me as who I am without mm -hmm. the facade, without the makeup, without the hair. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I look like, mm -hmm. you know, in the middle of the night? And will you be there for me? And that's such a key part of compassion. And empathy is to understand, to love, to accept, but then to assist and to aid as well. Yeah. So when we did Debunking Depression, the series on depression, I shared a, uh, a very personal story that I had never shared publicly. And here it is. 
when I was nine years old, no question, I was depressed, suicidal. I was seeing a therapist. I was put on Prozac. And for me, Prozac really changed my life. And I've been on social media and live streaming for years, never have shared that. It wasn't until I got in with MedCircle that I thought, you know what, I need to share this because uh, why am I embarrassed by it? Uh, and other people go through very similar things. So when I shared that series online, the debunking depression and saying, look, I have depression. Mm -hmm. uh, here's why I'm coming out with it. The amount of messages I got that said something along these lines, I can't believe you have depression and I'm, I feel so much better about me because <laughs> you do. And that made me happy Yeah, because I, I thought good mm -hmm. because we do put the best part of ourselves yes. in front of the camera yes. and online. And even when we meet people face to face. Yes. And so to see somebody living a life that you may incorrectly judge as being wonderful and fantastic yes. all the time yes to know that even they are going through something right. makes you feel not alone totally totally yeah. and you just for so many people normalize the situation because yeah. they're like you know kyle is such an amazing guy he's accomplished he's successful and wow he experiences depression wow like these are the many faces of depression it doesn't right. exist in in only one context and so right. you normalize that and that exactly is that 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 humility that you have, right? To level the playing field, to make you just became a compassionate listener, Kyle. By yes, you sharing right. your story, you encourage somebody else. You gave them a safe space. You're like, this is who I am. This is my story. What's yeah. yours? What do you want to share? Yes. You gave them space. So I think that's such a big part of bridging that loneliness gap, you know? And loneliness is now being called a public health epidemic because it's not just affecting an individual, it's, 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 it's affecting a whole society. And we're finding that the subjective feeling of loneliness is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes per day in the way that it affects our health. It increases our risk for heart attack, for blood pressure, for obesity, for depression, for anxiety, for cognitive decline and dementia, and our risk of death, it increases our risk of death by 30%, this subjective feeling of loneliness. Wow. So it really is like a wake up call for us as Americans and not just in America, but the UK has appointed a loneliness minister for this reason. Um, in San Francisco, there's a hotline that you can call it's a suicide mm -hmm. hotline, but it's also called a friendship hotline that if you really just need someone to talk to, um, and, you know, the problem with loneliness is that it causes us to withdraw and it and it activates a lot of our negative distortions. Right. I'm not good enough. I must not be cool and popular enough. I have no friends. I'm unlikable. We tend to personalize. We might blame other people. Why hasn't so and so reached out to us? And one of the antidotes of loneliness is actually to reach out and do what's counterintuitive is to reach out to somebody else mm. and to offer them help. So, you know, if you're talking about a friend that hasn't reached out in a long time, offer them support. You know, it's kind of like when they talk about a networking, don't ask what the other person can do for you. Mm -hmm. See what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. And altruism is a big part of the treatment. Altruism, giving back, treatment for depression, for post-traumatic stress disorder, all mental health issues. Part of the recovery is getting outside yourself and being available for somebody else. It's a distraction. What can a supporter do mm -hmm. if they see a friend, a child, mm -hmm. or a loved one? Yes. Who's lonely? To show up, to show up again and again and again. And that is giving the person the message that I am not alone. To also get help for that person, to mm -hmm. steer them in the direction of therapy. They may need medication. Mm -hmm. Loneliness itself is not a medical condition. Mm -hmm. It can be a normal part of life. Mm -hmm. Just like a person has experienced a job loss or a breakup, it is normal to feel lonely. In this survey, however, almost 50% of people said that they felt lonely, some or all of the time. That is concerning. It's concerning to me that I have to quote you this statistic as being the new norm, mm -hmm. right? Like if I ever get to the point where I was like, oh yeah, depression is not a big deal. Everybody has it. It's the norm. That's a problem. Yeah. 
it's a problem when you asked me or when I said to you that, you know what, everyone feels lonely every now and then. You don't need to medicate them. I'm not saying medication is the treatment for loneliness, yeah. right? Loneliness can be a normal part of life, but loneliness, when it leads to depression, and if that depression left unchecked goes on, you're definitely going to need therapy. Right. You may also need medication if the person is starting to, their behavior is very concerning. They're mm -hmm. not taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not eating. Mm -hmm. You know, we did, a, we did a whole series on depression right. and if suicide is an issue. But it bothers me that close to, you know, somewhere between 40 and, you know, 48% of people say that they feel lonely most of the time. And, and specifically the youngest generation. That's mm -hmm. really, really, really sad because you are putting a whole generation of people out there who are at risk for depression by the very nature of the fact that they're feeling lonely. Loneliness leads to, I mentioned, morbidity, mortality, heart mm -hmm. disease, physical problems. This is a problem. This is a public health crisis. If you have people who are at risk for everything bad that could possibly happen to somebody, obesity, the blood pressure, the diabetes, the depression, the anxiety, the substance abuse, that is a problem that we need to do something about. Well, and it starts with that compassionate listening. Yes. And to get there, I would urge people to practice compassionate questioning. Mm. I've learned one thing over and over and over doing these series mm -hmm. that the power of sitting down with somebody mm -hmm. and asking a heartfelt, compassionate question gets you so far so fast. Totally. And it's not just, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Blah, blah. You know what? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, someone called me on the phone and they go, how are you? Which everyone does. And I said, I'm fine. And he goes, I'm doing good. <laughs> I, go, I didn't ask you how you were. It's just been our norm. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's not make that the norm either. Yes. Yes. When I ask somebody, how are you? Yes. I, it's because I'm, I want to know how you are. Yes. If I ask somebody, what, what have you been thinking about lately? It's because mm -hmm. I want to know. Mm -hmm. If I'm asking somebody, have you thought about hurting yourself? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about killing yourself? Mm -hmm. It's because there is a concern there yes. that we need to address so that we can take the proper action. Yes. So compassionate listening yes. happens mm -hmm. when compassionate questioning occurs. That's wonderful. I'm so glad that you said that, Kyle, because so many people don't know how to engage in compassionate questioning. They're afraid of a variety of things. They're afraid of seeming too intrusive, mm -hmm. right? They don't know how to ask or they're afraid because they're afraid they're going to plant seeds in somebody's mind. When we had talked about suicide and, and supporters, how do they approach that topic? So many parents are saying, I don't want to plant seeds. I don't want to go there if they're not mm -hmm. talking. And I was like, you're not planting anything that hasn't already been there. That's Someone right. is so grateful. And you had shared with me, with, with Kevin, Hines Kevin Hines in that interview. Yeah about if you want to share that like he wanted people to ask and if anyone had asked that one question yeah right yeah he, the, kevin hines jumped off the golden gate bridge he survived on his way to the golden gate bridge to jump he said if anybody had come up mm -hmm. and asked me am i thinking about hurting myself am i thinking about killing myself or even are you okay mm -hmm. he goes i would have snapped out of it you we're on the bus hoping somebody would notice you. Somebody would ask you that question. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you planning on harming yourself? Yeah. And the, when I'm reading that, and I know when a lot of people else did, you even say on page three, I didn't jump because I wanted to die. I jumped because I believed I had to. Mm. I believed it was my only option, the only course to take, that I'd die by these two hands pain I was wrong I was wrong nobody and he's in tears mm -hmm. on a public bus he's in Shame. tears Shame. walking mm -hmm. not one person yes asked him yes powerful lesson and you know like just the way that we have first aid we should have psychological first aid what do you do when you see someone on the street who is very visibly shake it up. Mm -hmm. They're sad. We need to have resources. If you're not equipped, then that's fine. Where do you point them, right? When people do see somebody that they love or yeah. somebody that they've never met yeah. in a crisis, mm -hmm. what are the steps they should take? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. How can I help? Mm -hmm. Is there someone I can call? Is mm -hmm. there somewhere you want to go? Is mm -hmm. there something that you need? Sometimes people know what they want and hopefully if we're talking about an adult, they're able to, to say, you know, and I was recently talking about bullying and they were one of the one of the tools was asking the kid if you were bullied in school do you know who you would talk to 
And it's such an important question because it may not be the parent. That's yeah. the reality. Yeah. And it may be a teacher or a guidance counselor or a friend's parent. But having sort of in your mind an emergency contact list, an emergency contact person. Mm -hmm. and, and you should also be aware. If you are ever, you know, as um, someone going through something, who would I call and take in case of an emergency? Because we always think of case of emergencies as I break my leg and I'm in the hospital. Gotcha. No, no, the psychological case of emergency person we need to have, mm -hmm. you know, on our favorite speed dial list mm -hmm. as number one. This is who I talk to because mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people I work with who, in, who seem completely high functioning and they're depressed, but they have great jobs and everything is going well in their life and they feel suicidal. Right. Suicidality, by definition, implies that there's an impulsivity mm -hmm. and it is a fleeting thought. Right. It is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the next day when I've worked with people in emergency rooms, they'll tell you, I didn't want to die. And you had shared with me some, in your, something similar in your interview with Kevin. Oh, Hines yeah, it was almost, almost everybody who has jumped from a Golden Gate Bridge set who had survived said that the moment their hands left they regretted it mm -hmm. the moment and kevin said the same thing and that impulsivity and if you imagine if you had already known your entire life that there is one or two or three people that you can go down that list and that you must call mm -hmm. right like we need to ingrain this into people's minds psychological mm -hmm. first aid mm -hmm. right who am i going to call not ghostbusters you're going to call somebody That's on right. your top three list and yep. go down that list and there's a great app that i actually discovered it's called wobot it's free whoa wobot w-o-e-b-o-t wobot okay. and there, there are a lot of apps like this out okay. But it's trained where you basically give it information and it, you know, says sort of empathic statements back to you. And it's something that I'm sort of just experimenting with in between sessions. So mm -hmm. like if the you've, person has had therapy and that night they go home and they're like, I'm feeling feeling really low. Obviously, you know, the sort of national suicide hot prevention hotline. I had a patient last week who called and I said, you should have called me and you you always can and you have my cell phone number. And she's like, no, I know, but I just wanted to, to see what they would say. And just so I know in case of an emergency. So like having a strategy plan, okay, I can call my therapist, assuming I have one. A lot of times people don't want to burden family members. So you have to kind of really, I always tell people in times of peacetime versus crisis or wartime, you should identify what is in your quote, distress tolerance toolkit. Mm -hmm. So in times of emergency, who are you going to call? What behaviors are helpful for you? But engage in a list of behavior. I tell people just the way a person who suffers from a migraine headache knows after a certain number of years that this migraine is coming on. They experience auras. They have like sounds or noises or flashes of light they know it's coming on and they know that they need to take medication to, to short circuit that. They may need to lie down in a dark, quiet room. The same way when a person is experiencing an attack, whether it be a panic attack or an attack of depression and suicidality, be aware of the hopelessness, the helplessness, that chain of events that is spiraling down and try to intercept that before your mood goes you know i always check in with people at the beginning of the session what's your mood on a one to ten ten is the best one is the worst mm -hmm. zero is i don't want to live anymore mm -hmm. when you see your your mood tanking catch it on its way down mm -hmm. don't wait for it to get to a one mm -hmm. and most people do there's an active sort of desperation and it's hard because in the depression, that negative thinking keeps you in this vortex that keeps you spiraling down. You're not able to short circuit it because mm -hmm. you give in to those negative thoughts. Yeah. If I'm worthless, who's going to answer the phone? You don't even bother. I've done that many times, many, many times. Wow. It's always disastrous. How did you get out of it? I finally started to listen to my therapist. Mm -hmm. Because you can't do this. Mm -hmm. You can't take action when you're out of one. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yes. It's not possible. It's, it's just not an option for mm -hmm. you anymore. Mm -hmm. So when you're at a eight, seven, six, five, yes. what's happening? Yes. Action. Yes. Yeah. It's like that parachute string, right? Yeah. You're skydiving. You, you jumped off a plane. Yeah. You want to pull it when you're at mm -hmm. somewhere midway. You don't <laughs> want to wait right. until That's you hit the, the ground. That's the perfect metaphor. Yeah. Final thoughts on loneliness. It is a public health crisis we need to take it very seriously 50 percent of people almost 50 percent of people are experiencing it mm -hmm. decreases our lifespan by 30 percent the youngest generation is being affected the key is to be meaningfully engaged mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. in your activities in your hobbies and in your interests never lose a sense of mastery mm -hmm. what i don't care you don't have to be the best at it anything that gives you pleasure when you're doing it you feel mm -hmm. like there's a flow mm -hmm. you feel meaningful in life people want to feel needed they want to feel as if 
they have value mm -hmm. and they're valuable and they have worth. Mm -hmm. Helping other people gives you a sense of self-worth, mm -hmm. right? So don't be stingy with your time. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. I suggest as uh, to you guys watching to get more access to Dr. Varma, check out our debunking depression series on medcircle.com. She has a lot of great insight and tips there as well. And practice that compassionate questioning and that compassionate listening, not only with yourself, you can ask yourself, how am I doing today? You mm -hmm. can listen to yourself, but also to those that you love. And remember, whatever you're going through, you got this. Hey, real quick, I know mental health is complicated and overwhelming, but MedCircle can make your next step an easy one. When you go to MedCircle, you'll get simple explanations and actionable advice on the mental health topics that matter to you and those that you love. Visit MedCircle.com and start your mental health journey right now. All right. So that video was actually um, four segments that I put together because it was just so thorough. Uh, let me bring my helper back on. All right. It was so thorough. Um, it covered so many things that I just connected them all and let it play all the way through. OK. And so um, did anything stand out to you, Ishaya? Um, <clears throat> yeah, the whole thing was good, but I'll say something about when it was talking about um, the actual relational stuff when they said, hold on, he said compassionate questioning and compassionate listening. Well, he said compassionate questioning, but she was talking about compassionate listening. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that those are very good things. It's just for me, it's just when it has to be relational and when it has to be mutual, I don't, I don't, I don't need that, but I don't mind. I don't mind being a compassionate listener. I just don't need it to be a relational thing. If that makes sense. What do you mean by you don't need it to be a relational thing? Like, what do you mean by that? When I think about that, I think of a friendship. When when you have a friendship, both of you guys are compassionately listening or compassionately questioning. But I don't think that for me that is necessary. But I don't mind being a compassionate listener for whatever the case may be. So are you saying you don't feel like you need people to behave that way towards you? I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying I, no, I'm saying I don't need it to be a relational thing. I don't know how you say that. Are you saying you don't need to be a friend to the person in order to no. behave that way? I'm saying that you don't have, to, yeah, I'm saying you don't have to be friends. In order to be that, to behave that way. And yeah, in order to be a compa in order to be a compassionate listener, you do not have to be friends, right? Right, and that is true. I I, I agree with that. Um, I, let, let me process. <laughs> so I I wrote down a lot of things, and I, I I hit on that. So so maybe maybe I'll be able to process that. Um, what I'm trying, how I'm trying to respond to what you said, but I do, I, I do believe, I agree um, that you do not have to be friends with somebody in order to be compassionate towards them. And I think they said the, the, the speaker said that as well. Um, but compassionate listening is giving people permission. This is what I wrote down. Compassionate listening is giving people permission to empty what's in their heart. That's what compassionate listening is. It's, it's, giving them a space to vent, right? She, I think, what did she say? She said, I can't remember the word she used, but it's giving them a huh? I don't know the quote. Are you I talking about she, the quote? No, I think she said to pour out. I think she said to pour out, but it's, you know, giving them a space and giving them time, right? Everybody is such in a rush nowadays, you know, but just stopping and listening validates them them as a person like makes them feel like you care that oh wow this person would actually stop their busy routine and and listen to what i have to say this is that, like what i was saying before a simple smile like there's so many people who truly are lonely in this world 
a simple smile like can make somebody's day. So to actually stop what you're doing and listen to them, that can make their whole month, right? Or to actually go beyond a smile and say hello or wave, like those things many people take for granted, right? Um, because they're all in their own little world. But if you just look around, you can just see sadness on people's faces and stuff. That's why I'm really, I'm very intentional. Um, even if I call somebody on the phone, I say hello first, right? I don't just start talking, right? I, if I'm in the, 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 the checkout person at the store or whatever, I'll say hello to them before I start my financial interaction, you know, exchange and just different things like that. Just acknowledging people um, can make such a good, big difference in this selfish world that we live in. Um, I put empathy is the gateway to compassion and compassion is empathy in action. I twisted around what she said. It makes more sense to me that way. Empathy is the gateway to compassion. Compassion is empathy in action. Um, listening is not taking one for the team is actually wanting to hear what they have to say. I dealt I was dealing with that with one of my children. Um, how they just, you know, somebody was a talker and they just liked to talk and, you know, they didn't really want to hear what the person had to say. And, you know, I was trying to tell them, you know, basically what I just said is just, just listen. And, you know, they were like, well, I, well, I did, but, but you was listening. Like you could, you could sense the rush all over your face. You could sense the hurry up and stop talking. I can't wait till you're done all over your face. Like, you know, so whenever you, whenever that's not genuine, right? That's not a, that's not genuine. You're, you're, you think you're being kind, but really you're not because that's not genuine, right? So to genuinely care is a big deal. Um, I wrote depressed and suicidal. The, the man said he was depressed and suicidal at age nine. Like that is so, so sad, but it is also so, so not uncommon. That happens a lot. And we really need to be aware of that, that these children have real emotions. Don't downplay them. I was just talking to um, to somebody, an adult in my life. I won't give tell on them, but I was talking to an adult in my life and I was saying, you know, I can remember, I still remember it to this day. Like I was a teenager and I was stressed out. I told y'all some of the stuff I was going through last night with the violence and stuff. And those were two different, I didn't, I don't know if I clarified, I don't think I clarified last night that those incidents were by two different people. <laughs> That was not the same person. Those were two different people. And so when I was a teenager, I was going through a lot of stress and I ended up having to go to the doctor because I was having a lot of stomach problems and they um, diagnosed me with, they gave me a diagnosis that was caused by stress. And when um, this, uh, this adult in my life was, was made aware of that they were like, you're a teenager. What do you have? To, what do you have to be stressed about? And that, that stood out to me because I'm like, seriously, right now, like you have no idea <laughs> what I just went through yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so I'm serious. Like th this is, I was 16. I was probably 16, around 16 at that time. Um, so we don't doubt, you know, pay attention to the youth in your life and don't downgrade things because they are experiencing things that we did not. They're experiencing things that we did and some, right? The things that we did and some with this social media, uh, you only had to deal with, with, with bullies and stuff when you got to school. Now it's 24 seven with, with, with guns. And we didn't, that wasn't the thing back then. Right. And so it's a lot going on in this simple world. And so don't negate that in your children. Um, and also, so I told you that I just said about 16, but also when I was 19, I suffered from postpartum de depression for a, the first year of my child's life. I don't remember. I was just going through the motion. I was in college. I got my degree. I don't know how I was a walking just I just, God, that was God that woke me up every morning and like, just God, like I just, it was, I was just on go. I'm such a task. That's why I'm thankful. Like I'm thankful because I know me and I can look back and see that God created me a certain way for certain reasons and da, 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 da. da. And I'm so appreciative of it. Right. Because I am a task oriented person. It, I, I find, I feel 
I feel joy from getting things done. And so I was, I, it was, I'm, I was just a machine, you know what I mean? I, I knew what I had to do and I, and I got it done. That's just, that's the type of person I am, but I would wake up every morning. It was dark when I woke up, drop my daughter off the, to my aunt's house, go to school, go to uh, work afterwards, then go to uh, my, my practicals at the, at the hospital and then pick her up when it was dark. And then I would just hold her all night long and get up and do it again for a whole year. <laughs> Right at 19, I suffered postpartum depression. Like this stuff is real. And do you know, I don't think that there's anybody that knew about any of those incidents. Like there's, they just, you know, everybody was dealing with their own stuff, you know, and just not attentive, you know, like the guy said, like they were talking about the guy with the, the dump, jumped off the bridge. He was on a bus crying, a grown man, and nobody asked him, are you okay? He said, if just one person would have acknowledged his pain, he don't think he would have jumped. If just one person acknowledged him, that's powerful. That is, that is, that is extremely powerful. And we need to be mindful of that. We're not on this earth to be in our own little world. That's not why God left us here. God left us here to build his kingdom, to show his love. Amen. To everybody that we come in contact with every morning, I teach, I, I teach my children every morning, pray for, don't just pray for yourself to have a good day. First of all, pray for God to keep his hand upon you and keep you safe, but don't just pray for your own safety. Pray for your teachers, pray for your classmates, coworkers. That's the word I was talking about workers, Co your classmates, your coworkers, um, the people on the road that you driving past and that are driving past you, uh, the, all of that. Like, don't be selfish. This, this is a selfish world we live in, you know? And so we have to train our children and we have to example that before them. It's it's very, very serious, right? Um, and in that, in that state of depression that I had, you know, the good news is that when I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, I came to God with a pure heart. I meant it like I, when I and that's another thing about how I can see how God uses me. I say what I mean and, my, and I mean what I say. Like there's no joke. I'm not a jokey joke type person. So if I say something, people know that I'm that I mean what I say. Right. And so when I went to God. I was serious and I asked God, I said, listen, I can't do this no more. Like this has been a whole year now. Like this is crazy and I don't want no parts of it. And I said, God, I, I need you to heal me. Like everything that I have tried is not working. I mean, I was sincere and I asked God to heal me and he healed me. We just got to one, be sincere and two, Ask and you shall receive. You don't have to suffer needlessly. Ask. God is a healer. He wants to heal you, but he also wants you to ask him. In your asking, it's acknowledging that he can. It's in your asking that you acknowledge that you can, that, that God can. Amen. Glory to God. I wrote down loneliness increases risk of death by 30%. That's a lot. Why? Because it makes you more susceptible to serious health problems. Stress really can kill. It can because it 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 weakens your your body's defenses and immune system and all of that. I talked to you. I told you before about how the brain it affects everything that's going on within your body. And so if when you're stressed out, that's poison. You're just, you're, you're, you're emptying poison in your body. You lose your appetite or you overeat. Either way, it negatively affects your body, right? This is, everything is connected and it's very, very serious. Um, I wrote down treatment for recovering for loneliness is to serve others. That's biblical. We're supposed to serve. God created us to serve. <laughs> God created us to serve. That's why it's very, 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 very revealing when you belong to a church and you don't serve there. 
It reveals a lot about your personal relationship with God. It reveals a lot about whether or not you know who God is, whether or not you know what pleases God, whether you know what God says about that, whether or not you're obedient to God. It, it exposes your spiritual maturity level. It exposes you. It exposes you. <laughs> I wrote down nearly 50% of people feel lonely. And most of the time it includes, I'm sorry, Nearly 50% of people feel lonely most of the time. And that includes young people. This is not an adult issue. It is a person issue. It's a people issue. Amen. I wrote compassionate questions um, are too compassionate questioning is too often received as being nosy because people are not used to people actually caring about how they feel. People are so unhealthy and so in their own world and so used to people not acknowledging them that when somebody actually cares, they think there's something wrong with you. They think you're being nosy. No, I'm not being nosy. I, I really do care. <laughs> I really do. I, a lot of times I'll, I say hello or I'll ask, how are you doing in a text or even on a phone, whatever, and I'll lead with that. And then people will respond and they don't answer my question. And I'll say, I'll say it again. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat myself. I'll say, um, how are you feeling today? How are you doing today? To it, right? Until they answer me. So they know that I didn't, that wasn't just a passive thing that I was saying in conversation. No, I said it because I really do care and I really want to know your answer. But people aren't used to that. So they, they think you being nosy. No, I'm not being nosy. Like I, I have six children and a husband and a church and a ministry. I don't need your stuff to fill my day. <laughs> I'm asking you because I genuinely care about you because I have the heart of God. That's another thing. We have to get the heart of God. What, what God loves, we're supposed to love. And he loves his creation. What God hates, we're supposed to hate. And he hates Halloween. Glory to God. Because it's wicked and it's evil and it's demonic. Those are its roots. It embraces death and God is a God of life. Hallelujah. What hurts God should hurt us. What God is passionate about, we should be passionate about. Those are all exposing factors of your personal relationship with God. It's fruit. It's fruit. Your disobedience is, is fruit. It's rotten fruit. Right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I wrote um, compassionate listening occurs when compassionate questioning occurs. I think this is what Ishaya was getting to around this area. Compassionate listening occurs when compassionate questioning occurs. That's that's important. Bridge, I already put said that. Um, the guy said that he felt like killing himself was the only way to overcome his fear. He says, but he said, but I was wrong. And they also said most of the people that the moment they take their hand off of the bridge to jump in that, in that second, they regret it because your mind, that's the enemy will have you believing a lie and having believing that this is the only way you can stop the pain. He said that was a lie. Amen. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Don't believe that nobody cares about you, that nobody loves you. Don't believe that there's nobody to talk to. God fulfills all of those things. But also, if we're intentional and in looking, I just gave you some example. That person you talk to on the phone, engage them. That person in the grocery store, engage them. That's somebody to talk to. You'll be surprised. A lot of times I said, I said something to one guy. I just asked him how he was doing. Or I said, thank you. I just said something, something. And he just, he just literally poured out his, his all, everything was going on. He was like, he was like, yeah. And, and I didn't even ask him how he, I don't know. Whatever I asked him did not equate to the answer that he gave me. He just wanted somebody to say something to him. How often do you just go through the line and don't even acknowledge 
the human that's checking you out. That's rude and selfish and ungodly. <laughs> that's not that's not how God treats people. That's hum that's another human being. And you don't know what they're going through. We could be the, we could be light in their darkness. This this walk is not it's serious. Amen. Um I put you should have a um crisis contact stored in your phone. Do any of you do any of you have a crisis contact number in your phone? Right? That's a real question. I no. um you don't No. I had this number up. I had this sign this thing up right here. For the last five minutes, right? 988 can be used by anyone at, at any time at no cost. Trained crisis professionals can support individuals concerning suicide, self-harm, or any behavioral health, mental health need for themselves or people looking for help for their loved ones experiencing a mental health crisis. Lifeline services are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week at no cost to you. The National Suicide Prevention Line is now joined together as one. As all you got to do is now 988. Did anybody even pay attention to this slide that's been on that's been on the board? We've been uh -huh. talking about being attentive. Mm -hmm. I a few years ago, for the very first time in my life, so I was in my 40s, I had an anxiety attack. In the middle of the night, everybody was asleep. And I think that's why I had it. Because I had mentioned before about how I'm I, I, I'm very self-controlled. I can be going through some things and you will never know it because I have trained myself to be aware of how I present myself, right? And so I'm usually always surrounded by people. And so even if I'm at home and I will, if I if I'm having a moment, I'll go in the bathroom. I'll just go in the bathroom. They don't even, I'll be, I could be crying in the bathroom and they would never know it. They'd never know it. Right. And so I'll go in. So in this, in this moment, um, I didn't have to, to go and hide nowhere because everybody was already asleep. So I think that's why I broke down because I didn't have to catch myself and I just let go. And it was horrible. <laughs> It was horrible. And I did not know. I'm searching around like I'm online, like I'm, I knew I needed help and I'm looking online. I'm trying to find somebody to call. And I, and I think my focus, really, my focus was something for ministers. And that's where my problem was. I couldn't find much because th this level, this ministry thing is, is, is serious. Like you can't you just can't tell everybody everything. Right. You have to be like I believe in transparent ministry because transparency leads to transformation. And I've been sharing a lot of things with y'all be for the purpose of allowing you to see that I'm not in this holy roller that people like to call me. No, I've been through a whole lot of stuff and God has gotten me to this point. Amen. So there is hope to overcome a lot of things. And I share my testimonies to show you to, that, that you can overcome too. Right. But there are some things that you just can't share with everybody. And I was looking for something pertaining to pastors, ministry, and I couldn't find anything. And I just, you know, fortunately, because I know I, I am rooted in God, I got I got a control of myself and I started calling on God <laughs> and calling on Holy Spirit. Nobody else could help me. And that's probably why God wanted to show me, you know, you need to call on me. <laughs> so I eventually did and I got it together. But in that moment, in that situation, it I got I, I I I I knew that I needed to prepare moving forward. Like that right there, it only take me one time. I learned my lesson. I don't got to keep, I'm not gonna keep knocking my head over over a wall. I'm not gonna keep putting my hand in front of the furnace. It only take me one time to learn my lesson. And then we not going we're not gonna do that again. That's not right there, it was not gonna happen again. <laughs> right. And so I got numbers stored from that from that point forward i have numbers in my phone under crisis so i know i just look type in crisis and i have i have I, well i had two numbers in there i added a third one today when i was doing this lesson right so do you have a num numbers in there and if you don't 
By this point right now, you should already have 988 in your phone. See, this is the difference between this is this is this is this is the, the, the telling point of are you are you a talker or are you a doer? We got to move beyond just talking and we got to become action takers, initiators. Right. 988 should be in every single one of y'all phone right now because it's been on the screen. And then I even brought it to your attention. We teach in here. Right. This is what we're here for. It should be in everybody's phone that is that is hearing me right now. It should be stored under crisis. 988 should be in your phone. Amen. 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 Let me see. And then I have. Um, oh, two. And, and, and that's not just, you know, when I put that in my phone, it wasn't just for me. It was also for other people because I'm, I'm, I'm a resource. People contact me for resources because that's what I do. My training is in child and family services is basically a social worker in addition to nursing. Right. And so people contact me looking for help and I need to be able to give them help. So it was not only for me, but it was also so that I had a, a resource at my fingertips to be able to offer other people as well. Right. Um, know yourself and your mood levels and changes. Know yourself and your mood levels and changes. Just like we was talking about yesterday with crime and violence. When you get that first red flag, you need to be out. You need to be aware of the first red flag. When you're when you're going through mood changes, you need to be aware that your mood is slipping. Your mood is slipping and you need to interject. And keep and prevent it from dropping down to zero. Amen. Um, and then I put negative thinking keeps you in a vortex that keeps you spiraling in a downward spiral. It's like the apost the, the the um uh what's the word of, of sin that I've been saying every night? Apostasy. Apostasy, the cycle of apostasy. It's the cycle of apostasy. You sin and ask for forgiveness and sin again and ask for forgiveness and sin again and ask for forgiveness. Why? Because that sin is more important than God is. But when God becomes more important than the sin, the cycle stops. So this negative thinking keeps you in a vortex that keeps spinning down and down and down and down and down. But when you change your stinking thinking to positive thinking, the cycle stops. See how that works? And then lastly, I put people need to feel needed. Helping others gives you a sense of self-worth. People need to feel needed, especially women, and especially men too. It's just needed in different ways, actually. We're, every Humans are created to feel needed, right? Because we're created for relationship, the ultimate relationship being with God. And relationships are should be mutual, give and take. And so everybody is created to be needed. It's just that we we we're needed in different ways. Women, we talked about this too. Women are nurturers, men are protectors. That's how their brain, our brains are wired. So women need to nurture and men need to protect. There's a book called um, Love and Respect in the Family. Women need love, men need respect. It's how we're wired. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Let's see what this, what I don't, let's see. I, yeah. All right. And so here's some, here's some action steps for helping someone in emotional pain. Okay. Ask, ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? If you see, like you see that this person is, is dis distraught, you need to know what's going on in their brain so that you can help them. That's why I ask questions. I ask a lot of questions because the more information I have, the better I'm able to help you. That's why I ask questions. It's not because I'm being nosy. It's because the more information that I have, the better equipped I am to help you. I'm a helper. That's that's what God created me to be a helper. I'm a problem solver. So you have to know who you are and how you operate so that you can operate at your maximum capability. Amen. Um, next, keep them safe, reduce access to any lethal items or places, and then be there. Listen carefully and acknowledge their feelings. Help them connect. Call or text the 988 suicide and crisis lifeline number, and then stay connected. Follow up and stay in touch after a crisis. Okay. So these are steps that you can take if the person who's feeling lonely is someone else. Okay. This is what you can do. 
But what if it's you? What if you're the one who feels lonely? We talked about these yesterday. And they, they, I mean, they go hand in hand, right? Because isolation or withdrawal makes you susceptible to emotional abuse. Loneliness, isolation, withdrawal, it makes you more susceptible to being emotionally abused. It's all connected. <laughs> Having low self-esteem and self-image right when you're lonely you you it's it leads to low self esteem it leads to low self worth when you're lonely you have a decrease in appetite and weight when you're lonely you have frequent crying either whether it's calmly or uncontrolled when you're lonely you have outbursts of anger out of frustration when you're lonely you can have increased fears Right. So this this was we, we went over this slide yesterday, but it's all linked up because when you're lonely, it increases the possibility, the likelihood of you becoming emotionally abused because people who abuse people are predators. They're predators. They're looking for people in isolation. They're looking for people with low self-esteem. They're looking for people who look physically weak. They're looking for people who are emotionally weak. They're looking for people who, they're looking for that. They're predators. So we got to get this in check so that we are not sitting ducks just waiting for somebody to come and take advantage of us because we're lonely and we just want whoever that picture of the loneliness was was a, a empty bed you just want somebody in your bed Woo. you just want somebody to lay next to you when you're lonely you accept things that you should not accept cuz you just want somebody to love you you just want somebody to keep you company. This is real. This is real. And we we don't want we don't want to we don't want to move we don't want to move from you know being easy targets to actually entering into these stages of abuse because all because we're lonely. Because guess what the first stage is? Flattery and seduction. They know you're lonely. They're going to make you feel loved. See how that works? They know that you're lonely. So they they want you, they they going to give you their time because they, they only want you to spend time with them. You're lonely. So they so they so they threaten to leave. You don't want them to leave. So they so they so they just begin to toss things out there and see how how much can I control her? How what how much can I do and get away with it? Because you're lonely. And now you so desperate for them to stay, they start abusing and you think it's your fault. If I would do if I would do this, if I would do that, they would want to be here. They would want to be here with me. All from loneliness. This is serious. This is serious. Not only for ourselves, so we don't fall into to become victims of this, but so that our we our loved ones don't. So our daughters don't. So our grandchildren don't. So our friends don't. It's not always about us. It's about being equipped to help the people in our realm of influence. Know the signs and the symptoms and, and offer help. But if it is you, you got to help yourself first before you can help somebody else. Amen. Amen. Here's some additional resources. If, you, if you're going through loneliness, if it's spiraling out of control into depression, into mental mental illness call 911 i found out today it's nationwide you just give them your zip code 
and they will connect you with the, 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 the people that you need to help you with whatever your issue is, with whatever your issue is, they can help you. They can point you in the right direction. Amen. Some local numbers. Um, I added these numbers. So we have Beaver County crisis and then we have Pennsylvania crisis and then we have national crisis. All right. These are all 24 seven numbers, but to be honest, so you might call one and, and not and feel like you're not getting what you need. Don't stop there. Go to the go to, go start with the county. You ain't getting the help you need. Go to the state. If you're not getting the help you need. Go to this. Go to the national. You got to be serious. You got to pursue your own health, your own health sometimes until you find the right fit, until you get connected with the right person, with the right organization, with the right help. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And these are the um, the resources that I had provided on yesterday. Some of the resources that I provided on yesterday. OK, so, you know, we're just not we're not talking about it. I'm giving you I'm giving you re resources here because that's the key. Right. We um, transformational thinking. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may fulfill God's good, acceptable and perfect purpose for your life. You have to stop that stinking thinking and you have to begin to have the mind of God if you want to change. If you want your circumstance to change. Amen. Glory to God. For as a man thinketh. So for as a woman thinketh, for as she thinketh within herself, so is she. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have to understand how things work. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. We are a spirit, first and foremost, that, that, that has a soul, emotions and intellect, and lives in a body. The weapons of our warfare are not flesh. It's spiritual. Amen. And we have to begin to be aware of that so that we can fight properly. If it's warfare going on and you showing up to the battle with the wrong equipment, you, you might be setting yourself up for destruction. Amen. How do you fight a warfare in your mind? You have to pull down the strongholds of the imagination. You have to cast down the imagination. This ain't just talk. The Bible is not just a whole bunch of words. It's not just a big book. <laughs> No, it's your basic instructions before leaving earth. It is your source of help. It is your source. It is your guidance. It's your guide for how to live abundantly in this sinful world. You got to read it. You got to read it if you want to grow. That's what it is. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelli intelligent act of worship. Transforming your minds means that you need to be rational, logical, and intelligent. Intelligent. How do you become intelligent? Read. Leaders are readers. That's one of the main way, ways that the devil tried to keep me from having a love for education. He would make he would make my eyes. I've had eye issues for a long time, very long time, since about 12, about 12 years old. Right. And as I began to grow, grow closer to God, I, 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 I realized I needed to read my Bible. <laughs> so at. Twenty three. 23, 24, I, I read the Bible for the first time. And I was, I, I was in church my whole life, accepted the gift of salvation at seven. And I didn't read the Bible from front to cover until I was 23, 24 years old. That's not okay. I, I 
We got to do better. We have to be very intentional. And so as I begin to intentionally read my word, because those were the instructions he gave me, he gave me clear instructions when I converted. I was, I was, I, I was a, I was saved, but I would, I had, it had not converted allowing the Lord to be the head of my life until I was 24 years old, accepted the gift of salvation at seven saved from the power of sin was not, was not tapping into the power because I did not allow God to be the Lord of my life. until I was 24 years old and he gave me clear instructions. He said, <laughs> he told me to make him my husband. So I had to let, I had to find out, I had to build a relationship with him. I had to find out what he, who he was and what he liked, what he didn't like. Told me I had to read the word of God to find out who he was, what he liked and what he didn't like. And as I intentionally tried to do that, the devil would, would, would give me migraines. My, I would have eye pain, I, but I pressed through and I pressed. I was, I'm telling y'all when I do something, I'm all in. When I do something, all, I'm all in. So I press through and I press through and I press through. And eventually that joker gave up because he knew I wasn't stopping. These headaches ain't going to stop me. No, they're not going to stop me. When you serious, that joker gave up because he knew I was going to get what God. God gave me instructions and I was going to follow him. And I was going to get what I was seeking God for. And I was going to get what he told me I was going to have. Amen. And so. You, you, you leaders are readers. We need to read to build up the muscles in our brain that builds up the muscles. And I have multiple children who have some issues, right? And I'm very intentional. I homeschooled my children. Was it a, is it a sacrifice? Absolutely. But I knew what was needed. We have we're in seasons for a reason. So when you're in a season of 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 raising children, you got to make some sacrifices to make sure you're obeying God for these for these for these blessings that He placed in your life, right? And so I was very intentional, and I had to encourage them and make them understand. You know, okay, this is difficult. That doesn't mean you can't do it. It means you got to work harder. So we going to work harder and we going to build up that brain muscle. We going to build up that brain muscle. We going to build up that brain muscle. And it worked. It took intentional consistency. And it worked. There were results because we built up that brain muscle. We didn't just give up. No, we got to work harder. Let's strengthen that brain muscle. Let's strengthen it. Let's strengthen it. Let's strengthen it. And now it's strong. Amen. So you have to be intentional and you build up your intelligence. The more you read, the more, you know, that's why they, they say you want to keep something from, from a, from an, an uneducated person, put it in a book because they'll never read it. Let's break that. I got a stack of books. Every book I read, I keep a stack. I find encouragement Two, three stacks of books. Looking at that is encouraging to me. That's encouragement to me, but you got to be intentional. The more you read, the more you learn. The first book you need to read is the Bible. And then you read other stuff on top of that, right? Verse two, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively change as you mature spiritually. You should be progressing and maturing spiritually. If you're not, that means you're stagnant. And if you're stagnant, you're on your way to death. Spiritual death. By the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values, not the values and customs of this world. Not Halloween. We in that month. It's October. So I'm going to keep on saying it because that's a custom of this world. And it's not a godly value. There's You tell me one thing that's godly. None. There is none. It's the antithesis of godliness. It invokes fear and God is a God of peace. It embraces death and God is a God of life. So that you may prove for yourselves 
what the will of God is, that which is a good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Amen. So we got to be, we got to be intentional. We got to sacrifice some things. Amen. So that we can overcome these fears. So that, can know, uh -oh, what, so that we can know who God is, right? And so we're talking about transforming our minds. And so we're going to do this. I think we did this one other time. This is the 13th day. So we've only done this one other time. We're going to do this again today. And it's tr it's intentional transform transformational thinking. It's framing your your world with your with your words. It's it's uh, meditating on the things of God. It's meditating on positive things. We can physically change the wiring in our brain by focusing on positive things. It causes dead areas, gray areas in your brain to come alive. It's scientific fact. Amen. And so we're going to um, we're going to take in positivity and we're going to transform our mind, renew our mind, um, move from negative thinking to positive thinking. OK, and so we're going to listen to this. I'm going to take myself. We're going to take us off the screen. And I just want you to listen. And say. What is being said, amen, amen, and then we're going to um, move on from there. I'm going to be helping you alleviate some of the feelings of loneliness or isolation that you might be experiencing right now. My intention is that we're going to feel calmer, more peaceful and more optimistic so that you can take some action in making yourself feel even better during this time. So here we go. Even though I may be feeling lonely and isolated right now, I choose to deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. I choose to deeply and completely love, honor and forgive myself and anyone else who may be contributing to this experience. All this loneliness, all this boredom, I'm missing my normal life, I'm missing my friends, I'm missing family members, I'm missing physical contact, and I'm missing hugs. And I choose to let go of this feeling of loneliness. I'm letting go of this feeling of being isolated. I'm letting go of this story that I'm telling myself that I'm bored. I'm letting that go now. I could see this as a time of opportunity, a time to recharge my batteries, a time to reset my life. And even though I may not be able to go outside right now, what I can do is go inside. I can look for the things that bring me joy. I can find other ways to feel more connected. Because the truth is that the connections are there. If I allow myself to see them and find them. I'm allowing myself to see this as a positive time. A time of growth. 
time of reflection, a time of retreat. And I choose to see the beauty in the solitude. And I'm allowing myself to experience simple pleasures. Because in six months from now, I could look back upon this time as the time when I planted the seeds of my incredible future. Of the times I let go of the fears and the doubts. As the time I made big decisions about where my life is heading. And possibly even the time that I thrived and became a better version of myself. I choose to see this as an opportunity for growth. as an opportunity for learning. How many times have I asked myself that I wish I had more times to do the things that I wanted? Now I have that time. And I choose to see it as a gift. So I'm allowing myself to feel more peaceful now. I'm allowing myself to feel more optimistic. I'm allowing myself to feel better and better. I'm allowing myself to feel good allowing myself to feel joy. And I'm excited about this. Definitely optimistic. And I choose to know that even though I may not be able to control the outer world, I have full control over my inner world. I choose peace. I choose joy. And I choose optimism. In body, mind and spirit. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. So I hope you're feeling calmer and more positive and I'm sending you so much love this time and stay safe. Bye for now. Amen. Was that calming and relaxing? Amen. She talked about having joy, right? And that's a fruit of the spirit. It says, but the fruit of the spirit the result of his presence within us is love, which is unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, which is not the ability to wait, but how we act while we're waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with its, with its passions and appetites. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. 
our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is what we should be exhibiting, not loneliness. Amen. So do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith. Hold on to it. Rely on it. Keep going and believe also in me. Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the most high. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will rescue you and you shall honor me and glorify me. Choose the abundant life Christ offers. It is a choice. You don't have to be lonely. You can be alone and still have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. There is a difference between being alone and being lonely. Being alone is biblical. Jesus did it. Being lonely is not of God. It's not. Amen. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of the one who walks daily with him, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers and be thankful to God always. We are to be thankful to God always. Always, in all things, at all times, even when we are alone. We are to be thankful for times of aloneness. Being lonely is not showing thankfulness for time of aloneness. Being thankful is taking that opportunity and being an optimist and turning it around for your good. Amen. It's taking the time, taking this time to to focus on God, to draw closer to God, to read his word, to praise and worship him with song, to write a book, to call somebody up. They might not be with you physically, but call them up. Text them, whatever it is, however you communicate real relationship. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It says, I sought the Lord on the authority of his word and he delivered me from all my fears. God is willing and able to deliver you from every single one of your fears, from every single hint of loneliness. If you seek him out, if you seek him out, amen. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, is able to accomplish much when put into action. Faith without works is dead. When put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Prayer does more than change things. It can change everything. It can change lives. It can change situations. It can change circumstances. It can change loneliness to being thankful for aloneness. Amen. Glory to God. Only God can turn a mess into a message, a test into a testimony, a trial into triumph, a victim into into a victor who has victory. So don't just talk about it, be about it. Do something different to get different results. If you have not accepted the gift of salvation, accept it. It is as easy as ABC. Acknowledge you're a sinner in need of a savior from sin. Believe that Jesus Christ is that savior because he was willingly crucified on the cross for your sins, was buried and then rose from the dead with all power to resist the sin that separates us from God. Confess that Jesus is the Lord of your life and God is your heavenly father. It is that simple. Once you are saved, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret your past sins, 
Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So follow the plan. It works. When you receive a bad report, when you feel lonely, when you feel afraid, immediately seek the Lord for guidance. Fast. Pray. Listen for God's voice. Trust what he says. Worship him. Praise him. Obey him. And the fear will be defeated. The sin will be defeated. The loneliness will be defeated. And then thank him. And watch how the people in your realm of influence will begin to reverence God because they've seen how he moved in your life. And let that be the end of the story. Don't enter back into the cycle of apostasy by disobeying God and positioning yourself for destruction to come upon your witness. Whew. Too many people are a false witness because they live a hypocritical life. Don't do it. It's too dangerous. You are not promised the end of this night. So we can't. So it's not wise to live in a, in a state of needing to repent and not having the opportunity to. Just keep on living holy. <laughs> Just keep on living righteous. Make it a lifestyle. Amen. That way you're always ready. God said. God told me, fast, prepare, and be ready. That way you're always ready. If you're always properly positioned, if you're always obedient, always living holy, always living righteous, and yes, you can live holy in this present day. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe that lie that you can't live holy and righteous, that you can't live without sin. Yes, you can. Jesus said, greater works shall you perform. Great, you're, We are supposed to be greater. And if God did it and don't and, and, and don't and don't believe the lie. Oh, well, he was God. Yes. But he gave up his throne. He was flesh walking around on this here earth. Amen. Glory to God. And he lived holy and he was sinless. And with the help you, can you do it in your flesh? Absolutely not. Don't even got a chance. But when God is the Lord of your life, when God moves from God to Lord, and when you allow Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and be your guide and your helper, oh, yes, you can. Because that's what the word says. It says, be ye holy because be, before I am holy. It says, be holy for I am holy. God is not going to tell us to do something that we cannot do. That's the sin. Giving you justification. That's that's the enemy giving giving you justification for your sin so he can keep you in bondage and keep you in the cycle of apostasy. That's how the enemy works. See, we got to know his tri tricks and schemes and devices. And we got to we got to know. How do you know? Read the word. It tells you it tells you exactly how the enemy works. It's so much in the Bible. You just don't know because you won't pick it up and read it. It tells you exactly how the devil works. Exactly. But what do they say? Put it in a book. They won't read it. They won't know. Beat the odds. <laughs> Don't be that one. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Repent. Change your inner self. Your old way of thinking. I already said that. I must have hit the wrong button. Yes, I did. All right, so here's an opportunity to fast, an opportunity to fast. Do it, do it, do it. It builds your, just build your spirit, man. And it helps you be able to live holy and to live righteous. And then saturate your home, saturate your mind, saturate your atmosphere, saturate your car with the word of God. Just learn how to, just learn the word, sing along with them and you can train yourself how to praise and worship. You gotta practice. Right. You got to unzip them lips, unseal those lips and practice. Amen. And it changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere. It changes what, how your your it changes your 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 level of calmness and peaceness and peace. Peaceness is not a word, <laughs> but it provides peace. 
Amen. It shifts the atmosphere. Praise and worship shifts the atmosphere. We see that we have been seeing that for the last several months and every Sunday, how our praise and worship shifts the atmosphere. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be able to feel the presence of God. He's always there, but we don't always feel him. But you know how we feel him? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. He'll be giving you a big old hug and you will feel it. Oh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all don't know what y'all missing out on. I'm trying to tell you. Get in on this. Get in on this. Amen. Hallelujah. Declare a line and decree. Declare a line and decree. Say it with me. God did not give me a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given me a spirit of power and of love and of a of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Say it with me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. God desires repentance. Amen. So if you made it this far, go ahead and give yourself a round of applause. Another day in the books, another day in pursuit of God, another day of building your spiritual appetite. Listen, if you haven't been blessed already, it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. Amen. And so the road to a better life is straight ahead. Stay on the straight and narrow. Don't veer off onto that wide gate that leads you straight to hell. Amen. And don't get up. Don't get caught up with being. Uh, don't be caught in the rubble because you're you're allowing somebody to lead you straight to hell. Amen. From the pulpit. Glory to God. Unfortunately, it happens every day, but kingdoms built unto self will be dismantled and destroyed. Amen. And so if you're not already in a church where you are growing spiritually, we invite you to come and join us. The workers are the, the, the harvest is plentiful. It's the workers that are few. And we are looking for workers, for um, Holy Spirit fed, field leaders, for um, givers, for tithers, um, for musicians, for praise and worship leaders, um, for for ministry leaders in all areas, men's men leaders, um, men's ministry leaders, women's ministry leaders, youth ministry leaders, ten, teen ministry leaders, dance ministry leaders, um, all of that, all of that, everything that is needed uh, for the kingdom of God to be advanced. Um, we it, we we welcome your gifts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have a pure heart or an, are led by Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. So Abundant Life Ministries is um, uh, a woman to woman is an outreach of Abundant Life Ministries. Um, we have uh, service every Sunday at 1130 a.m. 2370 Hospital Drive in Aliquippa. All are welcome. Come as you are and allow um, Jesus to show you how to live the abundant life that he offers. Um, we have Bible study on Wednesdays at 6. Um, we have dance rehearsal for our youth on Wednesdays at 6 as well. Bring them and then stay for Bible study. They minister the last Sunday of every month. Um, and we also have a, a um, service coming up in November um, that one of our youth is heading up. Be looking out for it. We'll be uh, beginning to market now. She's um, finishing up the behind the scenes stuff, and then we'll be um, beginning to market that. So be excited and make sure you plan to come out when you see it. Amen. So tomorrow um, I'm going to be at the Women's Health Day celebration at the Beaver Valley Mall. If you're in the area, come on and stop by. It is tomorrow from 10 to 7. I will be speaking, presenting, um, 
uh, some information about transformational thinking at 1030 p.m. Um, so we will have a booth come on by and uh, not a booth, but a table um, come on by and say hello and um, get some information on some of the programs that we offer. Buy a T-shirt. Amen. We have think about it T-shirts that will be um, twenty dollars. We will have um, woman to woman T-shirts that will be ten dollars. We will also have some books and there will be various prices that are on the back. Um, we will have um, payment through PayPal or the website or um, we will have a card reader. So come on by and just show some support. Um, not only for us, but for all of the other um, people who will be there um, contributing to Eat, Think, and Move Healthy Women's Health Day of Celebration. Amen. Amen. So be praying for me because as soon as I get off of here, I got to put something together to present there. Amen. I had um, I had something together on a flash drive and it didn't, it, it just went out on me and I forgot to go and take it to get it fixed. So once again, we got fresh manna coming. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. God is an amazingly awesome God. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow we'll be talking about taming and conquering the fear of commitment, the fear of commitment. Amen. So two different extremes here. You got one end where you're, where you're lonely and then the other end where you're, um, somebody want to be with you and you're afraid to commit. Amen. It did, it did, so many different avenues of this thing called life. Amen. But we're going to overcome them all. And so come back tomorrow at eight o'clock PM Eastern standard time. And we will be here ready with some more fresh manna, fresh manna. Pray my strength in the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Um, Before I pray on, uh, or I'll go through some of these. I think my helper was, um, putting some up, but I know that there was some we did miss, but I'll just put them up as we do our, our closing announcements. Amen. Amen. I'm just looking through. It wasn't any questions. It was just amens. Yes, man. Yes. And amen. Amen. Glory to God. We love it. All right. Let's posture ourselves to seal uh, God's words in our heart and mind. Father, we thank you for there is none like you. We thank you for you are awesomely amazing, wonderfully wonderful. You are more than words can can that can say, more than we can think. Hallelujah. You are all of that and more and some above and beyond. You are alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. You are our healer. You are a provider. You are a protector. Oh God, there is none, absolutely none, absolutely nowhere like you. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for that because such a magnificent person, such a, a, a person all in a league all by himself created us, fearfully and wonderfully created us in your image. So we, we, we a good thing too. Amen. And I thank you, God, for creating us um, just the way that you have. I thank you for these beautiful brains, um, these magnificent, intricate brains that you have given us, oh God. And I pray that you would help us to transform them that you would help us to renew them, that you would help us to surrender them to you so that we can have peace in the midst of loneliness, in the midst of fear, in the midst of um, whatever it is, such circumstance, situation in our life that is not like you. We can, we can put our minds on you and you can grant us peace and comfort Oh God, hallelujah. So we thank you, God, for everything that was spoken on tonight, for everything that was learned on tonight, for everything that was released on tonight. Oh God, we thank you for it. We thank you for what you have already begun to do in the lives of those who are on this live, what you're going to do, um, what you're doing in this moment, what you're going to do in the future. Same thing for everybody who watches the playback. Oh God, we, we understand that this is not by accident. This is, this, this was very intentional for you to even place this on my heart. And I thank you for the obedience, God, because this series is going to be, it is, has already been powerful and it's going to continue to be powerful for many, many years to come for many, many months to come, for many, many days to come. 
and we thank you for it because it is you who is the healer. It is you who is the transformer. It is you who is the renewer. And we thank you for that, oh God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you left here to be our helper, to give us wisdom on how to live the abundant, to give us the ability and the power to live the abundant life that Christ offers here on this earth, to live holy and to live righteous. And we thank you for that opportunity, oh God. So we say, continue to have your way. We will continue to give you all the glory, honor, and praise that you deserve. And we will be right back here tomorrow as we continue to increase our spiritual appetite. In Jesus' matchless, powerful, wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you all so much. I will see you either tomorrow at the mall or tomorrow night right back here. Amen. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you.